get right to it. Let's factor, right? So we see the trinomial and we say, hey, that possibly could be factorable. Let's go ahead and just see if it's factorable and see if that helps us out. So we go ahead and factor this and we say, all right, that's x plus 3 times x minus 1 all over x plus 3. And oh my, look at that. My discontinuity divides out, so that means that is a whole. So I don't have a vertical asymptote, or I don't have a vertical asymptote, actually. If I did ask it or it said to label it, I now have a whole, which is that x equals negative 3. Right? So I mean, I didn't ask you guys about the whole. I, was, I wanted you guys to like, kind of recognize, though, that hey, yeah, that's not an asymptote. That's a whole because it divides out. Yes? It is. But it is a whole when it gets divided out. Last, remember last class period, we literally did a whole and an asymptote for every single function. Yeah. The holes got divided out, the asymptotes stayed. So when you simplify this, you are now left with a function f of x equals x minus 1. But there's a restriction on this function, yeah. right? What's the restriction on the function x minus 1? What can x not equal? x cannot equal negative 3, because that's where the whole occurs. That's where, the whole, that's where the discontinuity occurs. There is no vertical asymptote. It got divided out. When you simplify this function, it divides out. There is nothing, there's no standing. Like, here's the simplified function. There's no more vertical asymptote. There is no discontinuity here. There's no vertical asymptote when you're denominator. Correct. I mean, okay. you, oh, yes. I mean. OK, we'll get to it. So, Guys, let's, now let's kind of make sense of this. We can go upstairs and say, hey, Algebra 1 kids, can you guys go and graph this? And say, yeah, yes, we can, right? So y <laughs> equals mx plus b. b is your y-intercept. Go down to negative 1. m is your slope. Oh, crap, there's not an m there, right? But we can always write it as 1 over 1, right? Rise over run, change of y over change of x. So from here, we go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Yes. Um, so now we go ahead and graph this. However, in Algebra 1, we did not show them how to, or at least I didn't when I was teaching it. We didn't talk really about holes. Now, at negative 3, there's a hole there. And it just looks like this. It's not an asymptote, because an asymptote is where the graph is going to approach. But there literally is a graph, and there's just this random hole there. Now, do we know what the y value is of that hole? We could figure it out, really. You could really just plug in negative 3 and figure out what that value is. Um, to figure out where that hole like occurs, like it occurs at x equals negative three, but the occurs at x equals three, but the coordinate point of the hole is negative three, negative four. Okay. Now, is there a horizontal asymptote? Well, we already actually defined that from the horizontal <coughs> asymptote test, right? That's none. <coughs> x-intercept. Where does the graph cross the x-intercept? That's when y is equal to zero. Do I have your permission to do a little mental math? Nope. Replace. Oh, no. Replace 0, y with 0, solve for x. Add 1 to the other side, OK. x equals 1, or 1 comma 0. All right, what about the y-intercept? Can we do some more mental math? Replace x with 0, right? y equals 0 minus 1. Oh, y-intercept is negative 1, or 0 comma negative 1. And doesn't, did I do a pretty good job graphing? Yeah, right? We're pretty good, right? Thank you. You awake? You're good? Um, the domain. Guys, this is a line, right? A line, all real numbers. Ah, but we have that hole. So it's everything except for the hole. Um, so, so let's do the domain is from negative infinity to do, 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 the hole, which occurs at negative 3 union, and then um, negative 3 to infinity. The range is all real numbers except for that dang hole. And what was the y coordinate we said? Negative 4, right? Because if you just plug in negative 3, you get negative 4. So the range is from negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 4 to infinity. OK. Ooh, let's do some more limits. Limits as x approaches infinity of f of x. As you're going to the right, as this graph is going off the board, where is it going? Up, down, to 2? Is it going to 2? Is it approaching a horizontal asymptote? No, it's not approaching a horizontal asymptote. It's approaching infinity. infinity, right? Hey, back to what we kind of have learned before. Wait, so why, does it, why do you write it like x approaches infinity? It's the limit at, as x approaches infinity of the function f of x. 
is it your function f of x? So basically what it's saying is, what value is the function approaching as x is going towards infinity? Here's the x-axis, here's the f of x-axis. So as the x's are going towards infinity, where is the f of x, func where is the function approaching? It's going. It's just that means approaching, as x approaches infinity. Basically, I mean, as x gets bigger and bigger. Okay. So what about as x goes to negative infinity? Negative. negative infinity. Wow, OK, this is kind of a unique one. Ooh, let's do left and right hand limits. Okay. Yay. As x approaches negative 3 from the right of fx, as limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of fx, and what about the limit as x approaches negative 3 of fx? When does the limit ever exist whenever it's like just a number? Like it does and then it just alters the thing? It does. It does now. Oh, it does. Well, let's just do this together. Remember, this point is negative 3 comma negative 4, right? So as, I, as, my, as I'm approaching negative 3 from the right, <coughs> what value, what f of x value am I getting closer and closer to? No, no. As I'm approaching negative 3. Here's negative 3 right here. As I get closer and closer to negative 3, there's a hole there. But what value am I getting really, really close to? Negative 4. Is it equal to negative 4? No, there's a hole there. It's not equal to anything, right? That's a hole. But it's equal to negative 4. What about the left side? What does I go for? As I approach negative 3 from the left, what value am I getting really, really close to? Negative 4. Oh, OK. What about if I take both my hands and go from the left and the right? What value am I approaching? Oh, negative 4. Well, you think about it. Can f of x, it can't equal because we wrote that restriction. And if you don't like the restriction, go back to the original problem. x cannot equal negative 3. Right? So that's why when x is approaching negative 3, it's undefined. Right? But the limit is OK. So for instance, yeah, you're right. I can't do f of negative 3. I can't find the value of f of negative 3 because if you plug in negative 3 here, you get a 0 on the denominator. Right? If you plug in negative 3 here, we've already talked about that's restricted. You can't plug in negative 3. Right? That's restriction. We said no. It can't be negative 3. All right. One last one. <laughs> 